Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it so very much. Welcome, my name is Aiden. I'm so happy that you're here. This is kind of an exciting video today. I have been doing a few videos on different scent notes here and there. I've done one on cherry, I've done one on pineapple. And then I was thinking like sweet scents, like what are ones that have like sugar? This isn't the note of sugar, but this is the note of sponge sugar or candy floss, or as we call it here in the United States, cotton candy. I have seven fragrances that have the note of cotton candy in them. Some of these are probably pretty obvious, like the ones I put in the thumbnail. Obviously, Pink Sugar has some cotton candy in it. We will be talking about that one, but I wanted to talk about some other ones that um, you might not have in your collection or ones that you might not think about as having a cotton candy note. If you have any suggestions for uh, fragrances with cotton candy, please leave them down below. I love sweet fragrances, so I'm always interested in trying out new things and getting an idea of different fragrances. So let me know your suggestions down below. Let me know if you have any of these fragrances as well. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, especially that like, it really does help out uh, YouTubers, small YouTubers like myself. All right, so we're gonna start um, we're gonna start with one. I have featured this one in a video before. This was also has a note of cherry in it. This is Misguided. Uh, this is Babe Power. So it's probably most known because it looks like a can of soda or an energy drink or something. Like the width of it is more of an energy drink in, in my experience. Like it reminds me kind of a Red Bull. Yeah, I can see how this has cotton candy in it. Let me read you the notes really fast. So the top notes are sour cherry, pineapple, I guess it was in my pineapple video too and I didn't even pay attention uh, or didn't remember. Pineapple, rhubarb, pink pepper, apple, and grapefruit. Middle notes are jasmine, orange blossom, and peony. Base notes are cotton candy, vanilla, musk, and amber. I, I really enjoy this fragrance. This is one that every time I use it in one of these videos, I'm like, I, sh I should be wearing this more. And then I put it back on my shelf and I forget about it because I'm thinking about different things. Like today I am wearing an Atelier Citrus I think I put on Clementine, California. Anyway, a uh, very different type of a scent, but this is so, this is so good. And I can see it in the very high heat. It might be a little bit too much, but I can see this working a lot of the year because it has enough depth to it that you could wear it in cooler weather, but it also has a freshness about it. So you can wear it in uh, warmer months too. I wouldn't say necessarily that I smell a cotton candy, but it does have this beautiful sweetness to it. The fruits in here are really interesting and well blended too. This is a really good one. I think it's highly underrated. This particular one I got for $25 from Macy's. I was doing it, it was Black Friday or Black Friday in July or one of their one day sales. They do have those quite frequently. So if you are in the United States and can access the Macy's website, do check because they do have some really good deals. I get these, uh, I've gotten several of the Catherine Malandrinos, several by that I mean two. I got those back when I wasn't like super collecting perfumes, but you can get some affordable fragrances that way. This one, this one is a really good one. And I think if you want something sweet, but not like a toothache or that smells super, super, you know, like it doesn't smell like a candy. So if you want something just a little bit I don't want to say more mature, but I like to smell like bubblegum. I have bubblegum scented fragrances and I absolutely love them, but sometimes you don't want to smell just like sugar or like candy. And this one doesn't smell like a candy. This one smells like just a really fun, slightly fresh, sweet perfume, but not overly sweet. So this one I think is a good one and I would recommend it. Next up is La Petite Rove Noir Intense by Guerlain. So I have several of these, I have the cap on backwards, I realize the Guerlain goes in front. I have several of these in this collection. I have done an entire rundown of this entire line. I will say that this is not my favorite of the line and it does have vanilla in it, so you can tell that it has definitely darkened, but I love the bottles on these because they do have that beautiful, each one has a different dress. I wish the light would shine just right so that you could see it better. I love these bottles. I love these scents and they're ones that I really enjoy collecting and I'm always on the search for the newest flankers of it. This one took me a bit longer to get than some of the other ones and I did buy this uh, secondhand from Mercari because this one, these are not widely available in stores in the United States so they're a little trickier to find. This one is definitely a more uh, deeper scent. It 
doesn't automatically lend itself as a sweet scent, I think. Let me read you the notes though, so that I can uh, t speak more clearly and you probably will get a better idea. So the top notes are cotton candy, blueberry, raspberry, cassis, and bergamot. Middle notes are Bulgarian rose, orange blossom, and jasmine. Base notes are patchouli, vanilla patchouli, sandalwood, and musk. And I think the patchouli definitely brings this down and makes it more earthy, a little darker of a scent. A lot of these have tea in them, and I almost feel like this has kind of that sensibility that you get with the other La Petite, La Petite Robe Noirs. It's pretty. It's one that I need to definitely wear more because I have ne sadly neglected this, and I will fully admit that I have neglected this. But I, it's another one that I don't automatically think, oh, it's a sweet candy type of scent. Um, I do get some sweetness in there, but I'm getting a lot of the more uh, juicy fruits in there. And then the, those things that ground it, the florals, the patchouli. I definitely, I feel like you can definitely tell that there's bergamot in here because there's a slight, that might be the bergamot with mixed with the patchouli might be what's giving me more of the tea type of a uh, vibe to it. I do like this one. Once again, one that I, I have so many perfumes, like I have a ridiculous number of perfumes. I have a perfume haul coming, I know. Don't need any more, but this is one that I should wear more often. It's really pretty. I think this would be one that I could wear to work and I would still feel like pretty in it because that's what I normally want um, and slightly energized, but I don't think it would be too much that it would be distracting or feel odd to have in a professional setting. We're on the opposite end of the spectrum now. We are going straight on sugar. This is Sugarful by Michael Germain. And, and this is on HSN. I got a set of two of these. I think they were f between 40 and $50 and I had like a 20% off coupon. So I did get uh, quite a bit off. I think I paid $40. So maybe they were $50. Um, and I got this 1.4 ounce and I got a 3.4 ounce in this beautiful set. So they're, they're a great display piece as well. I, I thought the bottles were so cute because they look like an old fashioned sugar container that you would get in a diner. And let's give this one a spritz. Oh yeah, this one is definitely sweet. This is, oh, it's it's really nice. Mm. Okay, let me read you the notes. So we have top notes of wild strawberry and tangerine, middle notes of cotton candy and pink peony, base notes of sandalwood and musk. I definitely get the wild strawberry. I definitely get the sugar and cotton candy. It smells kind of like if you take a pink cotton candy and you take like do you remember strawberry shortcake scented things back in the day it's kind of like that so you have a slightly uh almost artificial strawberry but not not artificial like there's a hint it's just really bright and beautiful this one is really good this one i think it's I just got lipstick on it. It's deceptive because it does look like it's probably going to be pretty youthful. It does look like it's going to be, you know, kind of, um, I don't want to say immature, but it feels like kind of immature looking at it. And I love, like, these are the type of bottles that I love. Like, give me something that looks like it's supposed to be something else. And I think I will buy it. Um, but it really has a surprising depth to it. And I think this would be once again, I don't know, like it's super hot right now. It's, uh, you know, not as hot as it could be, but it is pretty hot. I wouldn't want to wear this in the middle of summer, but I can see this like late summer, early summer, spring, uh, just having a lot of fun with it. I kind of want to spray this all over me right now. Cause it's just delicious. Like it smells almost like you could drink it like a super sugary. Like if you took a strawberry Kool-Aid and you added too much sugar into it, that's what it smells like. It's really good. So Sugarful by Michael Germain. All right, this one has gotten quite a bit of hype here on YouTube. I've seen a few people really talk about this one a lot. This is Floral Street Wonderland Peony and they are a clean beauty brand. Uh, and this one I bought secondhand from another perfume reviewer. So I will have Holly's channel linked down below so that you can go check her out. She has an amazing collection. She does a lot of really unusual stuff. And I really, I always learn a lot as I watch her videos because 
she's so knowledgeable about fragrances and niche and indie and like under the radar type of scents as well. I sprayed this one on the other day. I wasn't sure what I thought about it. And I still don't know what I think about it um, and how it meshes with my skin. Let me tell you some of the notes. So our top notes are guava, red berries, and Sicilian lemon. Middle notes are raspberry bloom, peony, and violet. Base notes are cotton candy, vanilla, resins, woody notes, cedar, and vetiver. I feel like there's something slightly screechy to this scent, and I'm not quite sure what it is. There's just something that kind of sets my teeth on edge just a little bit. Like I like it, but at the same time, it just grates a little bit, if that makes any sense. Um, and I'm not sure what it is. I get that there's a slight sweetness from that cotton candy, but this is not a candy-like scent to me. It's more of a very fruity type scent with, um, like it's, I get the red berries in here quite a bit and I get those citruses in there and then they're, they're kind of tempered, I guess, with that sugar. I don't really, I don't get a lot of vanilla from this. And like, if I did a vanilla video, it would be ridiculously long. I was looking at doing a pear one, I think, and I had like a hundred fragrances with pear and I was like, okay, maybe I won't do a pear video. Um, cause that, that's a lot. I don't know. Maybe it's the resins that are doing it. I just, I don't love it. I don't dislike it. I need to give it a few wear tests and then maybe I too will pass this one along because it's pretty, but it's not one that I would run out there and pay a lot of money for. And it's not one that I think, I don't think it's the best from Wonderland or from Floral Street. I have some other ones that I've tried that I like much more. So yeah, this is kind of the one that I'm mad on. I'm sorry. Like the other ones, um, I like much more. This is probably my least favorite. Yeah, this is definitely my least favorite. I'm not going to rank them in this video, but this would be my least favorite uh, from this grouping. We're going to go with one that I don't think is widely, I don't think I've seen anybody really talk about this one. I'm really trying to think. I don't think there might be one person that I've heard mention it, but I don't think I've heard anybody else. And I try to watch as many videos as I can, but I have like over 500 videos in my watch later right now because there's just there's too many videos that I want to watch and people putting out great stuff all the time. So, uh, this is from Nina Ricci. This is the Le Monstres de, um, Nina collection. This is Nina. And I mean, I got this cause the bottle was so stinking cute. I picked this one up on Zulily. I picked up this one and Luna. And then I just talked about Luna Blossom not too long ago. I do take off the pom pom when I want to spray this one. Cause this one, unlike the Luna and Luna Blossom has a cap. So that's what it looks like. It's so cute. I love I love the whimsy that they created with this line. They're just oh, so darling. Anyway, did I say I got it from Zulily? I got it from Zulily and I totally bought it based on the bottles. This one, this one's interesting. So top notes are pear, cassis, bergamot, and lemon. Middle notes are cotton candy, apple, peony, rose, and jasmine. Base notes are praline, coffee, uh, vanilla, and cumarin. I'm getting so much out of this. Like I do get that there's a lot of fruitiness in here. I feel like I'm getting just a, t just a titch of the pear in there, but I'm getting the lemon in there as well. It's funny cause I'm looking at all these notes and I'm really getting a lot of the fruitiness in here. And it smells like just, you know, if you were cutting up fruits to make a fruit salad or something and you're cutting up your citruses and you're cutting up your other fruits and they're just like the juices are kind of all mixing together. It kind of reminds me of that, like, or like a really beautiful sangria, you know, like with a white wine in there. So it's, uh, not as heavy as a red wine sangria. It's kind of giving me that lightness to it. This would be a great warm weather scent because it is just so bright and sweet. I don't really get the cotton candy too much. Maybe it's just giving it a little sweetness, but I definitely don't get the coffee in here, which is hilarious that this has a coffee note in it. You're probably going to see this in a coffee scented fragrance countdown coming soon. 
Yeah, I really like this one. This is one that has been kept in its box because the box is so stunning as well. And it's one that I need to wear more. I know there's like three of them in here that I need to wear more. That's the problem when you have lots of uh, perfumes. But yes, I really like this one. And there's only been one dud in this group to me. All right, let's talk about Pink Sugar Berry Blast. Now, I do keep these in these containers if I have them because the fragrances can turn in if they're this particular line if they are exposed to too much light and even though I try to keep my fragrances as in the dark as possible it, you know the, the little bit of light that I do get uh, these turn much faster than the other ones this is a fairly recent uh, release and acquisition on my part I picked this one up at Nordstrom Rack for like $20. It was really inexpensive, especially for the size that I got. This is a 3.4 ounce, so you, you get a generous portion. Definitely get the sugar, definitely get the cotton candy in this one. It is a sweet, sweet scent. Our top notes are blueberry, blackberry, orange, and bergamot. Middle notes are cotton candy, cherry, wild strawberry, and cork. Yeah, cork as in a bottle. Interesting, okay. Then base notes are caramel, vanilla, tonka bean, cedar, and moss. And this one, I get that sugar. It is not as sweet as pink sugar. It's not like, doesn't have that burnt scent note to it that some people talk about. We'll talk, talk about it in a second. But I definitely get those berries in here, that cherry note in there. It's just like you have a whole bunch of sugared fruits. You take those all, all those berries and you uh, candy them. And that's what you get with this one. It's really pretty. It's really sweet. It is, you know, I don't think it was, would be an everyday scent. I feel like if you like some of the Bath and Body Works body sprays, you would also like this one. Uh, I, I really love sugary scents. So this one is a definite winner for me. I'm really glad that I picked it up and yeah, definitely get the cotton candy, definitely get the sugar, definitely get the berries. It's, it's just a fun one and uh, just delicious. It, it makes you want to eat cotton candy right, like right now. Blue cotton candy. Mm. All right, we have come to the last fragrance in this list and this is Pink Sugar by Aquilina. This one, uh, as you can see, like the color has changed just a little bit. I haven't used this one a ton. This was only a one ounce. I got this several years ago when Sephora used to do like minis for their uh, Black Friday specials. And I went in and I picked this one up. I think it was 10 or $15, which seemed like amazing deal at the time. It was one of the uh, earlier perfumes that I picked up in my collection. So I, once again, I like to keep it in its container like this because it just, uh, makes it last longer the juice is starting to darken now but it's i've had this for quite a few years let me tell you the notes on this one the top notes are raspberry orange fig leaf and bergamot middle notes are cotton candy licorice red berries strawberry and lily of the valley valley not valley base notes are caramel vanilla musk tonka bean and sandalwood it's interesting that it has so many notes I get a little bit of the caramel in there, definitely the cotton candy. Like it smells like spun sugar. I don't really get the fruit notes in here. It definitely smells very gourmand, very, um, I don't want to say it smells rich because it doesn't smell rich in the traditional sense of gourmands. It's kind of a light rich scent, if that makes any sense. I think it's nice. It's not one that I would like say run out and get if you want a cotton candy. I feel like the Berry Blast is actually like an immense step up from this. I think Sugarful is a step up and they both give you that really sweet sugary type of feel that cotton candy does. But without this one, a lot of people say has like a burnt sugar note to their nose. And I can see that with the Tonka bean and stuff. It can be a little dark. I think it's nice. I just, I want something a little bit more airy. And even though I said this is a light, heavy type of a scent, it is feels a little heavier than most of the other scents that I have in this 
uh, collection. So I don't like it, dislike it, but it, it's not a love for me. I think it would probably be okay to layer with, but it's not really one that I would say just wear as a standalone type of a scent. I hope that was helpful. I really enjoyed going through and looking at uh, my notes on Fragrantica. It is a great resource. It tells you, like you can create your own lists. Almost all of my perfumes are on that list. There are a few that are not on Fragrantica and um, I should do a video on that, like fragrances I have that are not on Fragrantica. Anyway, let me know what fragrances you think I missed. Let me know if you agree with my thoughts or not. That's the thing about fragrance, it is very subjective. Some people love a scent and then other people, it just does not work with their body chemistry. So let me know down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for stopping by and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Bye.